Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. I wanted to start a little series that uh, is going to show some of the features of the Holly EFI software. Uh, specifically, I'll be working, as you can see, in the Terminator X software, but a lot of these things will definitely apply to the other, uh, either version 4 or version 5 software for the Dominator or HP ECUs. This is the Holly main interface, and I already have a uh, configuration file loaded, but let's do that again. So you simply go to File, Open Global, and Holly includes some basic common configuration files that can get you started. Obviously, if you're using the handheld to build a config from scratch, you don't need to do this. But the point of this exercise is that's just to get you familiarized uh, with some of the basic features. And today in particular, um, I'm going to cover uh, the way that Holly structures their software um, because a lot of the functionality is not necessarily available from the get-go, but you need to enable it. What I mean by that is up here, you see the various icons. So these are referred to as ICFs. ICFs are individual configuration files. And for the software to work and for the engine, engine to run, you need five ICFs. You need the fuel ICF, the sensor ICF, the system ICF, the idle ICF, and the spark ICF. Without those five core ICFs, you don't have a running engine. Now you see this one um, has an extra ICF already loaded. That's the input output ICF. So if you want to remove or add functionality by removing or adding ICFs, you simply go to toolbox, remove ICF, and whatever is loaded will already appear. So now we can just get rid of that IO ICF. On the other hand, if we were working with a drive-by-wire system, for instance, like the uh, Terminator Max, uh, we would want to add a configuration file. So you, you, you get taken to a folder. If you go, you see, under uh, Holly, we'll go to Terminator X, individual configuration library, and you see the drive-by-wire here and you just double click on it, and now you can see that it's been added, all right? Uh, let's say we also have an automatic transmission, a 4L60 or a 4L80. Uh, again, toolbox, add individual config. We go back to the folder, and we can add the transmission ICF, um, and here we are. This is the transmission ICF that's being added. So as the, now the other one, let's add this one as well. Uh, the IO ICF that was also uh, already loaded because we'll talk about that at some point. All right, so the only other thing that I want to uh, cover in this video is the system ICF, which is sort of the core. I'm trying to keep these videos uh, relatively short, get you all's input on um, how you're liking these. And if there is positive input, please put your comments below in the comment section, and I will be glad to make more of these videos. So let's cover the basic um, system ICF here. Um, and look at what's available here. Now, it looks like the tune that was already loaded, remember we started with a um, um, pre can tune that Holly had. So just looking at it, it looks like um, a naturally aspirated uh, setup here, um, 427 cubic inches. Uh, here's where you specify what sort of um, fuel control strategy is going to be used. So in this case, it was VE based. Um, the other alternative that's commonly used is speed density. So here it's going to give you a warning. It says, would you like to convert the fuel map from VE uh, to fuel flow? Um, and what it's talking about here is if you look at the fuel table and the fuel ICF. So right now, um, it looks like, well, this has already been converted. So, oops, 
So let's go back here. All right, speed density. Um, I usually go with speed density because it makes most sense to me because the, again, the units that appear in the fuel table are actual fuel flow numbers. All right, so it's in liters per hour. All right. So multi-point, this is the drop-down menu. Obviously, all uh, LS systems are going to be multi-point, uh, wide, ba wide band type. Uh, there's only one option here. Um, injector end angle. Um, this topic is um, enough to have a, a video all unto itself to explain that. Um, this is where you enter your fuel injection information, which is super important. So Holly does give you a lot of different um, injectors that where the data, injector data is already in, um, been imputed for you. So let's say you have an LS3, you can click on the LS3 injector and you can see all these injector off times uh, get adjusted accordingly. Um, so this is a pretty, pretty big database. They give you all the GM part numbers. So that's very handy. All right. Um, and it also populates uh, the flow rate um, as well as the rated PSI. Um, this would actually be uh, 58.5, but it's close enough. All right. So that's one of the screens under the system um, ICF. The next one is the ignition parameters. Here we basically have, obviously, this is, you have a choice, either 58 tooth or 24 tooth, uh, 58 tooth, four, four tooth crank, or 24 tooth, one tooth crank. Or you have an option of doing custom, if you, and so you can actually mix and match. You can have a 58 tooth crank with a one pulse uh, cam, or you can have a 24 tooth crank and a four pulse uh, cam. So that's where you would select um, custom. Firing order, obviously, you don't need to change that. Uh, this is where you change the kind of uh, knock sensors that you have. So if you have a Gen 4 engine, you would select uh, two wire. They're on the sides of the block. If you have a Gen 3 where there are one wire sensors, uh, they would be in the lifter valley. Uh, there's also some ability to do sensor scalings. Um, we'll get into that maybe a little later. Um, so you can actually enter uh, values for, for the various sensors that you have coming in. Um, there's also a basic I.O. screen. So the Terminator X gives you two um, controls for two fans. There's a secondary fuel pump activation, and there's also an um, AC output that can be programmed. So you can see you can set your various temperatures for on off on the fans. Um, you can set the secondary fuel pump to activate uh, either by TPS or RPM and manifold pressure. Um, and these are all AND statements. So if you start putting all three things in, uh, all three conditions must be met in order for that secondary fuel pump uh, to activate. Uh, air conditioning, AC shutdown, so you can specify above, let's say, 75%. Um, you know, the AC compressor can shut down. You can also uh, give the IAC a slight kick when the AC is on. Um, maybe we'll talk about that when we talk about idle. Uh, torque converter, it gives you some basic settings for torque converter. Obviously, if you have a manual transmission, this doesn't apply. Uh, staging, um, this is a setting for um, setting your, your bump box. That's for drag racing. I don't do a whole lot of drag racing, so uh, this is something I generally don't mess with, but I'm sure a lot of you guys will be interested in. Uh, closed loop operation. So this particular screen, so you can, allows you to set your, um, whether you want it to operate in closed loop or open loop. You can set a minimum temperature as to when uh, closed loop can activate. I generally set this to 160 degrees, so below that the engine is operating in open loop. And here you can set your um, 
<clears throat> closed loop compensation limits. Now, as because remember, this system has a self learning um, fuel map, and we can cover some of that when we're talking about the fuel ICF. But essentially, this tells the computer how far it can go off the base table to correct the, the fuel map. Uh, when you're originally starting an engine brand new, you want these limits to be fairly high. And once you get that your tune nailed in, these can actually come down. All right. um, these are your learn parameters. Um, so the learn is related to closed loop, but think of it uh, essentially as a short term trim. So again, there are some limits um, as to when the ECU will look at the learn parameters. And again, we can cover more of this as when we look at the fuel ICF, but this is where you set some of those limits. Uh, you also have the ability to have um, individual cylinder fuel correction and timing correction. Uh, this is very helpful, but honestly, unless you have some real hard data, uh, I would leave these things alone. Um, there's also some inputs. This is um, where it tells you where these pins are programmed. So remember, in the basic IOs, we had some of these pins that, or these outputs that were already programmed in. So you see electric fan one, so that goes to um, the J1 connector B12 pin. This one is the fan for the second fan, it goes to J1 B11. Now, one thing that's different, um, well, I can I can cover that at another point. But this is where um, you specify which pin, pins um, are being populated um, for those particular outputs. I think that about covers it um, for the system ICF. Those are the, the basics. Um, I forgot this screen. This is to tell it whether you have an X or an X max. All right, there's nothing to that. All right, well, that covers the, the basics of the Holly software, at least uh, from the very basic standpoint and the system ICF. Again, please comment below. Let me know if you like these or what I should cover, what I should focus on. I'd be happy to do that. Um, if you like this video, uh, please hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks a lot.